first thing you're going to want to do is take the coolant out of the system and that is by opening the radiator drain plug. Make sure you have a catch basin so you can catch all the coolant that's about to come out. And then loosen up the actual radiator cap because that will let it flow out smoother. Remove the engine shield by lifting up, pulling it forward. Take off the airbox hose to the airbox. You can leave the top on if you want or take the top off. So we just need a 10 millimeter. Pop the coolant hose out of there. Take the tabs off the top of the cover. There should be four. Take the breather hose off. And then we're going to have an air temp sensor on the bottom here. So you're just going to squeeze this connector and disconnect it. Before we get into that area, we want to disconnect the negative battery cable. That's a 10 millimeter wrench or a socket. Make sure you set it aside so it doesn't touch. With a half inch drive extension and ratchet, I'm going to loosen up the surf belt tensioner so I can take the belt off. I'm going to push down on it slowly because it's got a shock for the tension. So I've got to push that hydraulic back and let that fluid slowly seep down. And once I feel it's loose enough, take the belt off, bring it back. Now I'm going to unplug the alternator power source. So I've got a little cover here that goes over the positive terminal. I'm going to move that aside. And then there's a red lock here. That's a safety lock. So you need to push that up and that frees up the tab, squeeze that in and pull that off. So now we're going to get a 13 millimeter socket and take that nut off. I like to put the nut right back on. And then set this aside. So now I'm going to take the alternator bracket off of the front of the engine. This bottom bolt is a 13 millimeter socket. I'll break that free. And then we get a 15 millimeter socket from the next two. Got one on this side. and one on the complete opposite. Looks identical. And it looks like there's one right in the middle. And this is a 16 millimeter socket right here. Okay, we should be able to slide this right out. The belt is still on. Let's get the belt off. Beautiful. And there's your alternator. Now we can take the belt off. Take it off the AC compressor, around the water pump, around the monoc balancer. So I'm going to take the two idler pulleys off first, and that's a 13 millimeter socket. There's one. So 
now I'm going to take the two lower hoses off the water pump. That's a lower radiator hose and a coolant bypass hose. Okay, now we're going to make sure the catch basin is below them and I'll pry them off. Okay, so I have a heater hose tool that gets underneath without ripping it and loosens it up all the way around. Pretty good aim, I have to say. There we go. Here comes a big mess. So now we're going to loosen the water pump up, all eight bolts, and it's a 10 millimeter socket. Get yourself a little 3 8 extension or whatever size ratchet you're using and break them free. Like I said, there's eight total. Just pay attention because it looks like it's the same bolts, but it's not attached to that. That's actually up here. And you need the extension for down here. And there's one way on the bottom. It's literally comes to a point like a triangle. And then it works that's the way up. You can always use the new water pump as a reference. It would be the first time someone's done something like that. I'm just going to use my extension. You see these? They come from the factory. Those go in, they hold the bolt in place while the rubber sits in the hole of the water pump. So when you go to place it in, you'll have a couple to start the bolts without losing them or dropping them. So I'm on the last bolt right now, and then we'll be ready to break this water pump free. The way the water pump is in the vehicle, set it up someplace, and as you take each bolt out, you can put them right back to where you got them. So I know that this one had that rubber bushing in it, and I had a short one here, and a short one here. This has a rubber bushing in it, but it's still down inside the housing, and that goes here. But as I take each bolt out, I'm just going to place it right in the spot where it goes. Okay, with a good pry bar or a flathead screwdriver, whatever you trust yourself with. So it shows a spot right down there that's got a lip on it for this particular situation. There we go. So how, see how this bolt came out with that rubber bushing I was talking about earlier? So three of them stayed in, actually four, and I want to take those out because I want to reuse them. So I'll just take a flathead screwdriver and I will work them out. There you go. So if you need to keep track of where they go, it mostly seems like it's all the long bolt. So now that the water pump is clearing out of the way, 
always want to clean the surface. You got a new, nice new rubber seal that's going to go on here, and you want it to seed because you don't want coolant coming out. So first thing I do is take a rag, and I just clean away any sand and debris. Now being an aluminum block, it's kind of tabooish and a no-no to take a nice little grinder to it, which we've all done one or two times in our life. But I'm going to show you the really the safe way and proper way. And this is emery cloth. And I just get a wooden sanding block. It's made of rubber. And I put some emery cloth on there. And I'm just going to sand away with a flat surface. Just like this. Might take an extra 15 minutes. No harm done. But I also know that I'm not getting aluminum shavings down inside that coolant port or warping the aluminum housing of the block by taking a cookie grinder to it. So now that the cleaning is done, I think it came out pretty good. You can see uh, it's pretty dang clean. And uh, it's time to put the water pump in. So let's get the gasket and water pump together. So here's the new water pump and the new gasket. And I have the bolts that have the long, the long bolts that have the actual washers, the little rubbers in there in place to hold it. And I'm gonna line up my gasket. Make sure it's seated correctly. And it's going the right way. Let's place her in. I do have my 10 millimeter socket really close so I can start, start some of these bolts. top one starting by hand and let's see if we get one of the I got a side one I'm just gonna work my way around and just hand start each one that's sticking out now I'm just gonna grab the four remaining short bolts and start them by hand And if you can't see very well when you're doing this, because I can't really see down below there, I'm just going to use the old water pump as a reference of a location if I can't make out where the bolt goes. That's the dinner bell. It's time for lunch. Okay, one left. And that's the one down at the point. Which, I don't know. It's almost right next to the harmonic balancer. Did it first time. Must be good at those carnival games. So now we're going to torque the water pump, and the torque specs is eight foot pounds, which equals to about 11 newton meters. And there is a torque sequence. So this is the first bolt right here. Even though eight doesn't seem like a lot. Is a reason for it. Okay, there's one, then two is mirror opposite of it over here on the right side of the pulley. And for the most part, that's what torquing is, is going back and forth on the opposite sides. up here. Fours are down here. Five. Are you done? Six is down here next to the actual lower radiator hose outlet. Seven is that one way down on the peak. And then eight is the other one over by six. So we have six. And then right here. It's the bottom part of the pulley. And the last one is nine, which is the top right up here.
Now we have our water pumps all installed, torqued, and ready to go. I'm gonna put the hoses back on and I'm gonna start with the lower radiator hose. I'll bring that right back up. And then I'm gonna put on the bypass hose or heater hose. I'm still using the factory band clamps because they're in good shape and I actually prefer them. And that's what this kind of tool is, is a band clamp. Always line the band clamp up with the actual old grooves so that it will not cause any leaks. There we go. So we have our two idler pulleys for the surf belt to install. Uh, quick note, I separated them so I kept a good memory of where they go. It's kind of obvious we have a short bolt and a long bolt. The longer bolt goes onto the longer shank and just hand start it. And the same with the shorter bolt. These do have a seat to them. It's like a cone shape, so it's kind of hard to mess this up. Once it starts to close up, the pulley just reseats itself because of the design of the bolt. Both of these are gonna to be torqued to 17 foot pounds and they are 13 millimeter socket. Let's say it again, 17 foot pounds. And they should spin freely. Now before I put the alternator on, I am going to put the surf belt on because it's gonna be a lot easier with that big bracket out of the way. So you go down over the harmonic balancer, and then you're gonna bring it through like a piece of thread right through these two pulleys and out over to the power steering. And the right side goes up over the water pump and over to the AC compressor. And then these two lovely little pulleys that we just installed is where the belt will feed up through and voila, the alternator will go right in there. All right, so we have our four bolts still in place. I'm gonna put the two top ones in because it seems a lot easier. And see how that belt is right there? Make sure it's not, you're not squishing it and it's not stopping. Just hand start all your bolts. The whole time, just keep making sure you can grab that belt. And you get good movement back there so we're all set. Okay, so now we're gonna tighten the alternator bracket to the block. You have your major center bolt here, which is a 60 millimeter socket, and that is 41 foot pounds. So we're gonna tighten that one first. Okay, so our two outer bolts identical on this side and that side. That's gonna be the 15 millimeter. That's 43 foot pounds. Now we can take our electrical and plug it in. Make sure you push down on that lock tab and then put our actual positive cable onto the alternator. And this, it's got a nice little tab on it, so it's gonna slide right in there to stop it from spinning. Put the washer side down. That's a 13 millimeter. And believe it or not, they do have a torque for that. The torque specs is actually 13 foot pounds. If you feel uncomfortable doing that, which I'm not gonna say I don't, because I do. Let's see what it feels like. 
Not bad, actually. That was perfect. So it's not as much as I thought. You always want that snug. You don't want it loose. It can actually arc, cause a lot of problems. So to put the surf belt back on, get a half inch drive. I put a little extension on my half inch ratchet and push down slowly so you get that shock to go down. Once it's bottomed out, you can reach back here and grab that belt and then put it right over the pulley. If it doesn't go, double check the rest of them. And I slipped right off that power steering. There we go. That's what it looks like. And just let up on the tensioner. And that hydraulic pressure and that shock will seat it right back. And it doesn't hurt to give a quick visual. Follow the belt around the best you can. I'm right in that pulley, power steering wise. I'm right in the pulley. Harmonic balancer, right in the pulley. And don't forget the old favorite AC. So we are all set, ready to roll. Belt is seated. Now we can start assembling the rest. Now we're ready to put the air hose from the throttle body to the air filter housing back. Don't forget to plug in the air temp sensor. So we're just gonna line that right up until it clicks. There we go. Put that on. This hose for the overflow. The, it, none of this is hard, but it's the tricky part is making sure that your air box clamps are out of the way, and they are good. Put that hose in. Now we just have to tighten that clamp. Let's put the housing down. There's four of these lock clamps. And then one way down here. Use. And don't forget that air bypass hose. It's a vent hose. We have two bolts right here, and that's just a 10 millimeter socket. We'll start them by hand. So we need an 8 millimeter socket to tighten that, or a flathead screwdriver, and 10 millimeter socket for that. Make sure the air hose is all the way down on that throttle body. That's it. We're not going to over tighten that, strip it. Now we're going to tighten up our radiator drain plug. And being plastic with an O-ring on it, you want that just snug. You do not want to over tighten it or under tighten it. See the difficulties we go through? Happy medium. And I think that is a happy medium. So now I've tightened the drain plug for the radiator and I'm ready to add my coolant. Um, I have a burping system here. It's just a funnel that as you burp it and you can run it and the level will go up and down and not make a mess. So that's what we're gonna do. I pre-checked my manufacturer's specs for the coolant and I've mixed it properly. This is universal fluid. So of course there's gonna be some of the factory stuff still in there and this will blend with it perfectly. And while we're waiting for that coolant to do its burping job, I'm just gonna reconnect my negative battery cable. Make sure it's all the way down on that terminal. You do not want it like this, okay? You want it down all the way. And it's a 10 millimeter socket. I'm just going to snug it up. See how it just pulls it in? It's kind of a new fancy design. You don't want this cable to move. A little loose is not okay. You want it to be snug. Which, at this point, I'm telling you, that's no good. So as you tighten it, see this movement I have? That's actually the terminal and going around that battery cable. And that's not what I want. So. To be honest with you, I need a whole new cable. Don't get a terminal end, because just a terminal end for a car this age, newer modern cars, when you put those old universal terminals on, it actually is really bad. It causes electrical draw sometimes. Corrosion gets in there, and when it wicks in, it goes everywhere. So it might be kind of pricey, but 
I'm going to do it correctly, and I'm going to get myself a new cable and a whole cable, which is probably going to come with the positive too. Now it's time to put the engine cover back on. So you have these two little ears sit in the back on those rubbers, and you have these two cups. So line that up, and then just pop it down.